Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be looking at FCS2 Finbox replacements and repairs. And we're actually going to do two separate ones. One of them is going to be this whiteboard here where we're going to fit a pre-cut block of PU foam. And the second one is going to be this blue fish here and we're going to use our expanding PU foam. And we'll go over the pros and cons of both methods and uh, how to go about doing it. So we're going to start with our blue boy here. Uh, the box on this one you can see has been ripped completely out of the board. The fin and the box are at the bottom of the ocean sadly. So we're going to start by giving it a quick buzz with some 120. Nothing crazy but just in case there's anything really loose the sander will let me know. So now that that's quickly sanded and we've removed any crazy loose pieces of glass we're going to mix up some foam. This is a PU blank so I'm going to use a 32 kg uh, weight or density foam here and we're going to mix it at a ratio of 1 to 1 so I'm going to go 5 mils of this part and 5 mils of our ISO the trick with this stuff is that you want to pour it into your void as you feel the cup heating up in your hand and the foam starts to show signs of growth you don't want to mix it and then sit it in the hole and wait 30 seconds for it to start expanding. In my experience, you end up with a lot of air bubbles in it doing it that way. If you pour it at kind of the last minute, you're going to get a lot less air bubbles. After I've poured this, I won't actually touch it until the next day. I found that if you sand it and laminate it too early, this stuff has a tendency to shrink underneath the fiberglass and you've got to start all over again. So once this is poured, we'll leave it overnight. The hardest part about working with this stuff is not just sitting there watching it grow. After about five minutes, it'll be fully expanded and it'll be dry enough to touch. So we're on to the next board while we wait for that. This board's a little bit different because the fin box is broken or the glass is cracked above it. So the fin box needs to be removed before we can replace the foam. While there's no quick and easy way to do this, the quickest and easiest way to do it is with a router or a laminate trimmer. A word to the wise here, this step is definitely the step that comes with the potential to really make your job hard and damage the board further around the fin plug area. So this stage here, you want to take your time and go as slow as possible. Whether you're doing it with a laminate trimmer or by hand, take your time on this step. If your fin box is damaged and still in the board and you don't have much experience in fixing boards, I would take it to a professional. Different case if the box is gone and you're just left with a hole in the board, but for this step in particular, it's for the experienced only, I would say. So I'm using a small or a thin router bit and I'm just freehanding, very shallow at the moment. I'm slowing this clip down just to show you. Right here you see the little orange ball that locks the fin in. Now, holding that orange ball in is a metal bar. There's a small metal pin in there, and you do not want to hit it with your router bit. It sucks. It's a good way to damage the surrounding area of the box. That little orange ball moves, of course. It rotates on the metal pin. So routing it is pretty difficult because once it's freely spinning, you've got a super high-speed router bit touching a plastic ball that's spinning as well. So thin it out if you can, but chiseling it off is definitely the best method I've found. Now that that orange piece of plastic is removed, you can see that steel bar. It's about an inch long, running up and down the box. So our next stage is going to be to route very carefully and very shallow depth to expose that metal bar. So fast forwarding a little, I've routed down to the metal bar. I'm not routing all the way to the edge of the box, I'm staying as close to the edge as I can but without actually touching the foam or the fiberglass surrounding the box. And using something like a chisel or a flathead screwdriver, I'm now able to pry that metal bar out, breaking any surrounding plastic that's still holding it in. Keep these metal bars because if you ever make longboard fins, these are perfect if you cut them, they'll hold your longboard fin into its box, so they do come in handy. So with the metal bar gone, that's it. The rest is all just plastic, so just increasing the depth each pass at a time, freehanding, staying away from the walls, keeping the walls of that box thin. You're just going to go deeper and deeper and deeper and remove the box. 
And now the box is gone, but you can see there's still some plastic remaining from the walls of the box. So grab your chisel, your flathead screwdriver out again, and you're just going to go around and pry those box walls from the foam they're being held onto. And after all of that, our board is now at the same stage as we started with the blue board. So our next step is going to be to cut some foam and to fill this hole in. This ding isn't too complicated of a shape, but cutting a piece of foam to fit in here perfectly is still going to be quite difficult. So that brings us to the first con of using this method as opposed to the expanding foam. We essentially need to make this ding bigger to make a friendly shape like a square or a rectangle that we can easily replicate with our spare block of foam. But to add a plus side to this, obviously this board is very white and using spare foam from a blank, my foam insert is also going to be very white as opposed to the expanding foam which comes in sort of a off yellow or a light brown. So using a ruler and a pencil here I'm drawing my rectangle but as close as humanly possible to the original plug that I'm trying to replace. And once that's all marked out I'm once again, same route a bit, going to freehand as close to the pencil lines as I possibly can to give myself a nice easy shape to work with. And that's it, we have routed it bigger and we now have a nice easy shape to mimic with our spare foam. So now we're going to pull out some masking tape and we're going to lay two pieces of masking tape in this case over our ding and we're going to push that masking tape down as hard as we possibly can so we can kind of see the, the edge of our route through the masking tape. And then we can take our rule around our pencil and follow that edge and trace it onto our masking tape. And now with our shape traced, we're going to pull the masking tape off and we can stick it onto our spare bit of foam. I'm going to line one of my edges up with the existing edge of my spare foam, just because I know that it's already straight, so it's just one less edge I have to sand. Once my tape's on and I'm happy with the placement, I'm just going to start cutting and cutting and cutting. Now it's cut out, so i just got to sand it to fit and I want it to fit tight. And our last step before we actually install this sucker is to draw, not an arrow, to draw an N and a T for nose and tail. So when we remove it, we know which way it's meant to go in the board when we put it back in. So this step's going to be reasonably self-explanatory. Using our mixing stick, we're going to paint the inside of our ding. And we are going to paint the sides of our block as well. Uh, this is a poly board, so of course this is poly resin, and I have mixed it with some micro balloons, just so it stays in place a little better, it's not running and pooling, and I'm not dripping it all over the board, it just helps it hold it in place. Once we've painted it all up, we're going to sink our block in, and we're going to push it down really hard, squeezing any excess resin out the sides. We want it to sit flat with our ding, we don't want it floating in that cavity. And then to assure it doesn't float up while we're not looking at it, we're going to use this masking tape and we're going to pinch it down real tight. Really tight. And then it must be lunchtime. So after lunch, we can remove our tape, knowing that our resin has kicked and our phone block is holding in there nice and firm. We're going to cut the top off it, just to save us some sanding, get that top removed, and then both boards are at the same stage. So we're going to sand our foam down nice and flush with the board and we're going to get it ready for laminating. We need to sand well beyond the area of our repair so that we've got room for our lamination and hot coat. So on to laminating. I'm using two different glassing schedules here but you choose what you want to do over the top of your repair. I really only base what cloth I'm putting over the top of the repair on how much of my foam I think is still going to be left after I route for the box. But I would say at this stage keep your glass light because once we put the box in we're going to laminate again. So hot coating now, uh, just while we're doing this, a question that is bound to rise is why are you laminating the board before you route for the box? Can we not just install the box now and laminate straight over that and skip this step? You definitely can do this, and quite often with epoxy I do, just because the drying time's so long. But because poly kicks so fast, it really doesn't take much extra time to do this extra step. And it ensures that when I'm routing for the box, 
the board is fully sanded. The concave is where it should be at. I'm working with no edges at all. I don't have foam I can damage. So it kind of makes for a better install at the end. But if you're pressured for time or it's your board and you don't really care that much, then yeah, you can skip this step and just go straight into routing for the box and lamb straight over that box. So with our hot coat cured, we're back to sanding. The only noteworthy thing here is you can see on the whiteboard the dimensions are written above our repair and as I'm sanding I'm starting to scuff away at that writing. So for the rest of this job I'm going to make sure that I'm keeping resin on top of that writing and I'm keeping any resin edges away from it so I'm not sanding anywhere near that, that black text. Now that our hot coat is sanded we can mark for our route. So you can see here there's two horizontal lines. Those horizontal lines indicate the top and the bottom of the fin box, while the vertical line indicates the inside edge of our fin slot. Once we know our positioning, we can lay down our jig, set our depth for our FCS router piece, and start carefully routing out for our box to go in. Because we're technically installing these boxes post LAM, the fit after your route is going to be really, really tight. So if you're struggling to get your boxes in, then take a Dremel or a little piece of sandpaper on your finger and just slowly wear away around the border of the fiberglass until it fits. The big risk is not so much putting the box in, but pulling it out. Because there's little grooves on the sides of these boxes, as you pull it out, if the route is really, really snug, those little grooves will actually catch the lip of the fiberglass and you may delaminate all the work you've just done. Once your box is in, you can check your cant angles and double check your measurements if you want and then we're ready to install the box. A little bit of resin in the bottom of your route. Um, paint your box as well. Using your popsicle stick or even a brush, paint up the sides so you've got plenty of spread on the resin. Like I said, make sure you paint the box. Push your box in. You want resin oozing out of the sides. If it's not coming out of all of the sides of your box, pull the box out, add a little more resin in the bottom of the hole. And then once it's in there, we're gonna check our angle, mask our fin down so it doesn't move, and wait. So we're gonna go two different directions with these boards at this stage. With this white board, I'm just gonna peel the tape straight away, and then our box is installed, but we have a little raised lip on it you can see here. So with this board, I'm going to chuck our sticker over the top of it, so it's sealed up. I'm going to laminate it. I've got a 4-ounce patch uh, going over the box, and I've got a 2-ounce patch going over all of that, keeping in mind I'm trying to save that black text above our repair. So I'm making this repair a little bit bigger. Uh, the problem with doing it this way is you run the risk of getting air bubbles in that cloth with the raised section of the box. If you're a little nervous about getting those air bubbles, then with the blue board here, I'm sanding it down flat before I laminate it. So the box is installed, but I'm going to sand it flat here and then laminate it. So if you want to do it that way, it's a surefire way to not have to worry about getting air bubbles. Both ways are perfectly acceptable, so whatever's easier for you, do it. And once our lamination is cured, we're of course going to mask the area off and pour our hot coat, seal that cloth in, let that cure, and then we're ready for our final sand. We're gonna sand both of these starting with 120 still. I do prefer to start with 240 if I can on final sands, but because of these stickers, we've gotta get them out from underneath the cloth and the resin. So starting with 120 is the easier way, then we're gonna to go to 240, then 320 and then start wet sanding at either 320 or 400 and you can go as far as you want on there before your final polish and clean up and we're done. So a final word on the foams that we're using, uh, both are perfectly acceptable. The job's done right if you're replacing foam so it's really just a matter of which one's easier and more accessible to you. Our expanding foam has the benefits of being quick and easy and not having to make the ding larger before we fill it but it has the downsides of its color and needing to leave it 24 hours or a day before we can glass it and start working with it. And at the same time, our foam block has the benefit of the color if we're working on a white board, 
but it has the downside of needing to make the ding bigger in a lot of cases so that we can fit that foam block in and it's a little more time consuming to actually cut the block out match the shape perfectly and, and glue it in so both have their pros and cons depending on your schedule but like I say either one is perfectly acceptable so if you watch this whole video congratulations on making it to the end they take bloody ages to film and to edit they definitely slow my work down which isn't good for my customers so if you want to subscribe that would be much appreciated and we'll see you in the next one Chee -hoo!